Um, I feel like the defense, we've been very, we took advantage of a lot of uh, good opportunities we had. But um, also, we have a lot of, a lot of, we like to say, left money on the field. We, there was times we could have made uh, plays that we didn't make. But for the most part, we, we got takeaways. And right now, we just focus on stopping the run more. Yeah, what do you remember from last year's game at Appalachian State, especially the second half, and what you can learn from that going into this game? Um, the biggest thing we can learn from last year's game is to finish because we started out pretty good. We came out, we shut them out, and then, as we all know, second half came, they, they went 35 unanswered. So it was crazy, but um, that's something we, we take kind of personal, and we know we, we, can't, we can't fall asleep at any moment of the game. Brandon, as one of the more experienced offensive linemen, you know you have some young guys, first time starters next to you. How do you think the overall line is, is progressing and, and what you can do moving forward to get the running game going? Um, for sure, we're young up front, but one big thing I will say is week by week, we're definitely 100% getting better, um, especially in the run game. That's what we're trying to focus on a lot, uh, coming out into conference and you know going for moving forward. Did you find much of a difference going from left tackle to right tackle? Or? Um, no, not much of a difference. Uh, just kind of knowing where your quarterback is. We know that last year, you know, we had Braxton back there at quarterback, so he was a righty. So this year, with Moose being a left-handed quarterback, being his blindside tackle, that's pretty much it. Can you talk about maybe, because he's competed really well, <laughs> taken a lot of hits, made a bunch of plays, ran, ran the ball, but yeah. so just talk about who he is and how he's responded to um, Sometimes in um, we love Moose as a quarterback, you know, coming out, being a leader for the offense. Um, one big thing that we're trying to focus on, especially in the O-line room, is making sure that he takes less hits. Last game, we gave up five sacks, and that's, you know, unacceptable being in the O-line room. So with him being the guy that we want back there at quarterback, we got to make sure we protect him a lot more. Um, no, not much of a difference. Everybody wants to win the game. So I feel like, if anything, it'll be, you know, the speed of the game, making sure that, you know, we just do our job up front. This is for both of you guys. Penalties are a little bit of a problem the first two weeks. Obviously, 14 against Idaho State, but you've only had five the last two weeks and one on the road. Uh, what has the team done player-wise to make sure that that keeps going? Um, Penalties is something that we really emphasize, like because we know, especially the penalties that we can control. Now, sometimes there's penalties where they're, they come from playing hard and things like that. But the ones that we can control, we really emphasized on that and like really, we real detailed. Even in practice, we really make sure that we're not trying to get as much penalties as we have in the past. Um, for the offense, I would say, uh, you know, last year we had a problem with jumping off sides, so getting into the the snap count and knowing the cadence is one thing that we focused on. We, we didn't want that to have, be a problem at all this year. Um, the holding penalties, like they said, you know, that's just playing hard, but that's also something that we can work on being in the O-line room. Oh, yeah, and also we, um, we actually had the band come out and play loud music at practice so we can, uh, like, you know, we can be that atmosphere of, you know, just noise and things like that. That's something we've done to, you know, minimize penalties. Brandon, right last year, we went through five different quarterbacks, and you had were so young in the offense, so trying everybody to try and learn on the job. How hard was that? Um, I would say it was really difficult. You know, being able to adjust and adapt to having a different quarterback, and then also changing the playbook as much as we did, I felt like it was super difficult. But uh, like I said in the beginning, you know, us keening in on our job, you know protecting the quarterback, getting big plays in the run game is something that we're trying to focus on. And how it was last year is completely different from this year. And Des, can you just talk about Boise State's offense and the fact that they got the giant of a quarterback and they got two veteran running backs and they got a mismatched guy, a big wide receiver? Yeah. It's a pretty big challenge. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they have, they have a pretty good team. They play hard. But um, we feel like we match up pretty well with them. And um, we know they have a quarterback that's really good with his feet. So that's another thing we emphasize on defense. But um, I think if everybody just does their 111, we'll be all right. I think we'll be all right. And we can compete with, um, with anybody, I feel like. It's a pretty good rivalry. Yeah, it's a pretty good rivalry, too. 
and we got a bad taste in our mouth, so it's, it's always a good one. Boise was uh, picked to finish first in the conference. Uh, they're seven-point favorites, I believe. Is that something the team talks about within the players right now? Um, early on, I did see that they were picked first to win the conference. I mean, but that's just opinions. Um, I don't know. It's just a, this is a game that I feel like this game is a is, is really one of the more important games, especially going into conference. Like this game can uh, really show show a lot. It can turn a lot of heads too. So this is an important game. Yeah, the way the schedule sets up, you're playing two of the top teams in the conference right off the bat. Does that create more urgency right up front than by early on in the season? Um, I think so. Yeah, because we all kind of know that, and um, I also believe that these uh, last two games has prepared us well to get going against teams like this because we we had a, two good challenges back to back. So I think we're ready. I think it's it's perfect timing actually. Um, I would say you know with them being the first two teams that we play, all the games in our conference you know coming up are big games for us. So uh, we taking this game just as we take any other game in the entire conference. Going out in the win, making sure we protect up front and make sure we get the ball down field. Can you talk a bit more about the rivalry? Both of you guys is uh, four and four as far as your watch is split. So right. this is kind of like a, a tiger. <laughs> yeah. This is a chance to take pretty big games and put us right off the bat. Okay. Yeah. Um, I also hear that uh, the Mount West is not just the mountain in the West anymore. It's like we're all one. So I feel like that makes it even more important. Like, so it's a. It's a real big, especially defense. We don't, we don't, we're not really comfortable with what happened with last year. So, it's it's a big game for us. It's a real big game, and the rivalry is it's always fun because I know they come to play too. So it's always a fun game. I would say it's a rivalry like how Fresno is. You know, it's a big game for us. And like they said last year, we got shut out in the fourth or in the second half, not being able to score and everything. Uh, so this is a big game just as much as it is Fresno. How does playing on Friday impact? Um, it's a quick turnaround, so like, but like, you gotta kind of trick your mind a little bit. So like today, today is Tuesday, but it's really Wednesday for us. Like that's what we got everywhere around the uh, facility. It's Wednesday, so we're not even thinking. It ain't gonna. I'm not gonna feel it until it's after I get that Saturday and Sunday off. I'm like, okay, that was a good break, but it's a fast turnaround for sure. Have you ever missed a class as a result of tricking your mind into a failure? <laughs> nah, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Our coaches they don't allow us to miss classes, <laughs> so uh, I don't even play like that. <laughs> you guys have classes on Friday? No. No, I don't either. I don't only have one class this year. Tuesdays, Thursdays. <laughs> Mine's on Wednesday. Brandon, what's it been like to see Christian Jones have to play immediately and go through his own personal learning curve at a really tough position? Been able to? Have you talked to him a lot? Does he counsel with you? Um. I love Christian Jones being able to, you know, come in and play the position that he is at left tackle. I've been talking with him since day one on, you know, things that he needs to know being at left tackle, you know, just being, a, being able to be a part of the old line and bringing him in, especially with the other guys that we got in the room. Um, one big thing I will say is uh, him being the young guy on the old line and we kind of have another group, you know, with at least the left guard on over. He's the young guy in the, in the group and we kind of bring him together and bring him in making sure that he does his job just as well as everybody else. Anything else? All right, thank you everybody. Thank you. Thank you guys. Yeah, thank you.